Well, in week one, the Jets scored 31 points. Last year, the Jets scored 31 points once. Two years ago, the Jets scored 31 points once. So you'd have to believe that week one's offensive performance would be a pretty good sign of things to come. Right, Ryan Fitzpatrick? We had a great start, yeah, but we can do a lot of things better on offense. If we come out and lay an egg this week, that's all forgotten quickly, you know. And uh, so you're only as good as your next game. Everybody's got to continue to work, uh, and we've got to go out there and prove it each and every week. We know what our potential is, and we know what we're capable of. I mean, uh, you can never really judge anyone off one week's performance. You know, we, we hope to be consistent throughout the whole season. I think we have the ability past run to – to be threatening every game, uh, whether you know we do that or not, it's up to us uh, as players to execute. I know one thing, only thing that we can control is how we prepare every single day in the classroom and on the field. And I like what I see, and I think if we continue to do that, whatever it is, if, if it's 15 points is our potential, or if it's 40 points, you know we'll we'll be able to reach it. Meanwhile, Andrew Luck and the Colts, they scored 31 points many, many times last year. 4,700 yards, 40 touchdowns. He led the NFL in that category. So suffice it to say, the Jets will have their hands full on Monday night in Indianapolis. With more, here's our Jets game plan crew. Brian Custer, Ray Lucas, Eric Coleman. How do you game plan for Andrew Luck? Well, you know, like we said earlier with Andrew Luck, you've got to attack Andrew Luck with the blitz. You have to have a controlled blitz. You have to stay in your lanes. As you see Buffalo, you know, everyone has a lane. There's guys, there's guys coming off blocks, and they're getting to him. In the secondary, you've got to get hands on receivers to throw off the timing of his routes. He likes to throw the ball quick and inside, breaking routes versus the blitz. As you see here, they had a spy on Andrew Luck. Guys are hustling to the ball, running him down from the backside. It's got to be a, a tenacity, a, a ferocity with the defense when you play against Andrew Luck and down the field, attack the football. You, he'll throw some picks for you, Ray. I mean, listen, we know Andrew Luck's good. He's still relatively young, but he'll, he'll turn it over as well. Absolutely, because he has one of those strong arms. The hardest thing for a quarterback to do when he has a strong arm, he thinks he can fit it in very small windows, and that can get you in a lot of trouble, especially when you're facing against a great secondary like the Jets have. For me personally, I think it's you got to create some turnovers. you got to be good on offense to have a good defense. To me, put the pressure on it. You saw with Buffalo Brits, you didn't see somebody create a space Creedy Lane, everything, everything was closed in. They pushed from the middle back. Now, if you can get Andrew Luck off his spot, he becomes almost an average slower when he's throwing on the run. The majority of the time, he's going to want to pull it down. So if you can cover, you might get some coverage sacks too, Brian. You talked about controlled aggression. And with Luck, you want to put pressure on him, but you know he can run. So as a defensive player, how do you have controlled aggression when you're just trying to get to the quarterback, but yet you're trying to maintain your lane? Well, you, you, have, to, you have to trust your teammates. It's all about trust. You if you know that you have the A gap and your teammate's going to be in the B gap and he steps up, you have to stay disciplined and stay where your responsibility calls. Again, spy. If you don't want to blitz all out, blitz Brian, you have a linebacker sit there and watch exactly where he goes and you just mirror it wherever he goes. Once he busts through that line, linebacker comes up, makes a tackle.